threads, all the forums in all the world. She had to post in mine. Today we got something different. It's a level one diagnostic, but it's a noir level one diagnostic. It's the story of a black swan. And yes, a black swan in the Nazim Taleb sense. So we'll talk about the book part of it in a minute, but this is actually a motherboard diagnostic. We're going to do a level one diagnostic. And I've already done a much longer version of this diagnostic for the level one patrons. So if you would like to hear an old windbag, like try to tell a story and fail, oh, he's trying. You could go deal with that, but. I was gonna try to tell the story and then like tell you the motherboard name at the end, but it's the ROG Dominus Extreme. Asus had a production problem, a major production problem, I think. There were enough members of our community that reached out independently over a period of several weeks. Some of these problems go back actually a couple of months and it took a while to one, convince people on the internet that spent $5,000 on kit to send me, an internet rando, some of their kit. But also, uh, somebody had such a bad RMA experience. Well, everybody had a bad RMA experience, but one person in particular had such a terrible RMA experience trying to get this motherboard fixed that they were like, you know what? It's $5,000 of hardware. I don't even care if you keep it. I'm going to send it to you because I had such a bad experience. I want you to figure this out and, and see what's going on. Long story short, uh, there are a bunch of people that actually are buying the socket 31 3647 like the Xeon W 3175 there's also the new 3275 that is clock locked and you don't need a motherboard this nice to do it this is a $2000 motherboard and the W3175 is a $3000 CPU that CPU I saw at Computex 2018 it's the one that needed a one horsepower chiller to do its thing well Asus launched that uh early in 2019 with motherboards that were manufactured I think in late 2018 Everything was good, but then there was a second batch, a second round of motherboards. The second round of motherboards, it had a lot of problems judging by the people in our community. And I had no idea. There were so many people in the level one community that were day traders or otherwise one percenters, the independently wealthy. How's it going? I hope to be one of you someday, but I hope I get there ethically. Oh, there goes our patrons. <laughs> So what does a black swan event look like? Okay, imagine this scenario. You send the motherboard back. I mean, Asus is a multi-billion dollar company. They're not trying to do anything shady or dishonest. You send the motherboard back, the RMA people say it works. They send it back to you and it doesn't work. It's gotta be your stuff, right? What if you're both right? The motherboard does not work when it's in your hands every time. And when it's in the RMA people's hands, it works every time. I don't want to spoil it for you, but I also don't want this video to be 20 minutes long. Turns out it's a thermal issue. One of the people uh, on our community, one of the people in our community that I was talking to, uh, indirectly figured it out. They, they had an important clue. They put their system together and it wouldn't boot. Double zero. You put it in, you do the diagnostics, you call ASUS support, they say it's a bad CPU, incorrect mounting pressure, a lot of things with your $2,000 motherboard and your $3,000 CPU. There's not really a warranty. Intel did actually go back and say, okay, we'll give you a one-time mulligans on the 3175. So like if you overclock and kill it one time, they will replace it, which is a pretty good deal. Honestly, they have that on some of the other CPUs. It costs like 20 or $25. You get a one-time mulligans and they'll fix you up. Although if the processor is physically damaged, they will not fix you up. So no delitting, no defacing the processor, no any of that. Although I think it's pretty dumb that they don't, like if you send them the CPU back and you've screwed up delitting it, I think you should get a one-time mulligans for that. Story for another day. Anyway, 3175, $5,000 a kit, no warranty, super frustrating, and super frustrating that Asus support would send you down the rabbit hole. I called Asus support myself with this because somebody was crazy enough to send me the motherboard so that I could do the experiment. And yeah, the support experiment, pretty bad. Um, long story short, they didn't want to replace the motherboard. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm sure it's the motherboard. I did all these diagnostics. I have multiple CPUs, multiple power supplies, multiple graphics cards. And finally it was, somebody will call you back. <sighs> Here's the thing. A black swan event is something that nobody can foresee. What was actually happening was 
the motherboards were being returned to the RMA department, or the RMA people. The RMA people, whether that's in California or subtropical areas like Taiwan, I don't know, but it's probably not air conditioned. So the clue from our forum member was, hey, I was so frustrated I left the computer on and then I came back the next day and I reset the system and it posted normally. So his particular system worked fine as long as uh, the system was warm. That was the clue. So with the other systems, we tried doing the same kind of thing. And one of the other people that was having trouble left his computer on overnight and it still wouldn't post. But then later we had the idea, it's like, maybe we could try like a hairdryer kind of thing. So he hit it with a hairdryer and sure enough, yeah, it took off and posted. I used my hot air gun to narrow down exactly where on the motherboard something went wrong. Turns out it's a couple of surface mount resistors. I also verified that by reverse engineering boards that were recently fixed. So I think Asus figured this out about the same time I did. But in the interim, several months, a lot of our community members had returned these boards multiple times. One, one guy said he had done six RMAs, another person said they had done four RMAs. Everybody that had done multiple RMAs ended up with multiple $3,000 CPUs, uh, multiple other different motherboards. Some of them went with a different brand, and they're like, well, the other brand worked fine. One of our community members had trouble with the motherboard and CPU, returned the motherboard and CPU. They rejected the CPU return because it had been opened, sent the CPU back to them, but they bought a different motherboard and it worked. So they just assumed that the ASUS, their particular ASUS motherboard was defective. But if you check Amazon and Newegg, you can see it's a one and a two star rating. And I think it's because a lot of people have gotten these defective motherboards and the ASUS RMA system was not really set up to deal with that. Cause like with Amazon, you return it to Amazon and then Amazon usually doesn't even bother sending it back to the manufacturer. So the manufacturer is like, huh, there's a higher than average defect rate, but that happens months later not weeks later, they're not immediately aware of a problem. The only way that they're immediately aware of a problem is a bunch of people getting really super angry. So I did the level one diagnostic, I did the SMT board repair, and sure enough, the board behind me, no problem, replaced, uh, I replaced one surface mount resistor with a 6K surface mount resistor that measured um, like five point something K, and yeah, this thing was fine after that, would post every time, cold, hot, did not matter. So Asus is, I think, now fixing these because I looked at a board that had been reworked that was returned in the last couple of weeks, and now it's good. So if you've got an Asus Dominus Extreme motherboard and you had problems, now's the time to get it replaced because they know what the issue was. But this was a black swan event because they did not correctly diagnose it. They didn't really know that anything was going wrong because they would get the motherboards back and it would test fine. And then the customers would get the motherboard and it would test bad. Not for, for them, they would be like, I can't boot it. But then Asus would look at it and say, it boots fine, everything is good. And so this creates a really terrible, terrible customer service uh, situation. And still to this day, if you call in and it's like, hey, I've got a $2,000 motherboard, it's got the problem. They don't do advanced replacement. You can, and they're like, well, we might be able to escalate and get somebody to do that but we don't, we don't do that. So I've got all the call recordings and all this stuff and it's a terrible, terrible mess. But that was a level one diagnostic and that was sort of interesting. And if you're into that kind of thing, the Black Swan events, you should read Nassim Taleb's books. Anti-Fragile is the second book in the series and it talks about, it's not really a series, it's more of a continuation. And there's a lot of interesting stuff in there. I mean, you can see how, unless you were explicitly checking, when you think about a motherboard coming off an assembly line, it's gonna be warm, you're gonna not wait overnight or many, many hours to test the motherboard cold. You're gonna test it, it's gonna be fine. You're gonna send it to customers, it's gonna be cold. It's probably, you know, it's probably freezing overnight in the UPS warehouse or, or whatever. People are gonna use it in air conditioned areas. It's gonna be, you know, 72, 70, 68, something like that. This board would post fine as long as it was over 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So get out the hairdryer, point it at the, uh, the area of the board near the Q code detector, you could totally do it, but that that particular SMT resistor at the uh, DIM.2 slot on the right hand side, that's the one you replace with a 6K. Now I'm not gonna encourage you to do the SMT replacement, this is a defective product. Asus should be made to fix it. In fact, it's so defective that I think Asus should pay the return shipping for anybody that's experiencing this particular double zero code. So if they give you the runaround, like they did me when I called it in, escalate. I'm Wendell, this is level one. This has been a noir level one diagnostic. And it all started with one forum post. 
and then escalated and snowballed from there. I even reached out to people on Amazon and Newegg that had uh, uh, posted on some other message boards. And uh, there's a lot of boards that have these problems. Probably, uh, there's not a lot of people that are buying $2,000 motherboards and $3,000 processors, but there's a lot of people having this problem. This is the fix. This is the full skinny on everything that happened. You can get your board fixed. It will be fixed now. But you still probably should insist on better customer service because good lord, it's a $2,000 motherboard. All right. That's enough rambling. I'm Wendell. This is Level 1. I'm signing out. I'll see you later. And if you want the long version of this, you can subscribe to Patreon. So there we are. It's not you. It's not your cooler. It's not your mounting pressure. It's not something you did wrong. It's not something you crunched into the socket. It's not your CPU. Your CPU's not dead. It's the ROG Dominus Extreme and the circuit it uses for presence detect of the CPU. Asus has got to do better. Until then, there's the Gigabyte board. Just saying. <laughs>